Good day, ladies and gentlemen. The Walther P-38 was one of the most legendary pistols to come out of World War II. It was a revolutionary design, and one that would endure all the way to the year 2000. Now today, we're taking a look at the post-war variant of the Walther P-38, the Walther P-1. Now this Walther P-1 was manufactured in March of 1980. One, and was manufactured for the Bundeswehr. This is actually a older import because it was actually imported by Interarms. The ones you generally find today will be imported by Century International Arms. And one of the best aspects of this particular importer is the fact that unlike with CAI, who likes to put giant import markings that kind of ugly up the gun, the Interarms import marking is discreetly under the barrel. Now the Walther P-38, and by extension the Walther P-1, was a somewhat revolutionary design for the time. You had a double action, single action mechanism, one that was quite good indeed, but it also allowed you to potentially carry the pistol safely cocked and locked. Now one thing you have to remember about the 1911 is that it wasn't until 1980 with the Colt Series 80 that you had a firing pin block, meaning that if you carried the 1911 cocked and locked, you could potentially drop it, and if you dropped it just right, the bloody thing could go off. With this thing, you don't have that particular issue, because what you have is a decocker. The safety decocker is something that is fairly common by today's standards, but was very new back in the late 1930s throughout the 1940s. So what you have here is a semi-automatic single stack pistol. The magazines hold eight rounds, and you can change the magazine with a heel type mag release. The heel type mag release is actually pretty good as far as heel type mag releases go. You can really just pull it back with, your th with the palm of your hand and pull out which is pretty good, and it's a lot faster to reload than you might think. Now, heel type mag releases are not designed for speed reloads as they are designed for mag retention, but this is not as painful as some others, as you can just easily move it with your palm and pull it out. With practice, it won't be nearly as fast as your typical button type mag release, but it won't be as slow as some others. This pistol is extraordinarily well made. The slide is very, very smooth. And the trigger pull for both double and single action is simultaneously excellent and not that bad. The single action trigger pull is excellent. The double action trigger pull is very, very heavy, but it's not as heavy as, say, the double action trigger pull on a unmodified Beretta 92. The grip is very, very comfortable, but the pistol is not quite as ergonomic as I would like. Uh, if you're holding it two-handed, it's very easy to toggle the hammer on and off, but if you held it one-handed, there's no way you're gonna one-hand that bloody hammer at all. The safety is also a little difficult to toggle on and off with one hand. You got to turn the pistol to the side and actuate it that way. Now if you're holding it two-handed it's not too difficult but it still could be slightly more ergonomic. Disassembly is more or less like the Beretta 92 but it's still a little difficult here and there and is somewhat finicky. Not that finicky but somewhat finicky. Now the Walter P1 here uh, has a number of differences from the P38. Now it's more or less identical, but you can look upon the P1 as basically the product improved version of the P38. Instead of a steel frame, you have an aluminum frame, you have a thicker slide to compensate for the aluminum frame, and you have a reinforcing lug to also compensate for the aluminum frame as well. Thus the pistol is a lot lighter than the original P38. And actually, for a pistol of this vintage, it actually is pretty light. Uh, fully loaded, this is not nearly as heavy as a 1911 of comparable age. Now, one thing I did not mention in terms of ergonomics is the slide release is not too bad, but it's somewhat difficult to reach if you're not thinking about it, and you can't potentially just sort of accidentally toggle it and send it home. Now, the barrel on here is actually kind of weird. Uh, from my research, the barrel is not actually rifled. Instead, there's a rifled insert I'm not really sure why they did that. That just seems a bit overcomplicated. But then again, it is the Germans. Now then, this pistol did come with a holster. What we got here is a black leather holster. It's pretty nice, pretty heavy duty. This is not a quick draw holster. And uh, 
the secondary mag is also not a quick draw mag. You've got to really rip that bloody thing out of there, as you shall see in the video. The sighting mechanism on here is absolutely exceptional. Uh, you've got what is effectively a proto three dot sighting mechanism. The front blade has a little dot and the rear sight has a little line and it's very, very easy to line up quite quickly and you can pick it up fairly fast. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be going out to the pistol range and we're going to be shooting at distances of seven yards and 15 yards. It's primarily going to be seven and we're going to be doing this because we're only going to be shooting 50 cartridges and that is due to the fact that nine millimeter is sadly expensive at the time of this video's recording. And I'm going to be using nine millimeter manufactured by three different manufacturers. I'm going to be shooting some uh, 115 grain gecko, 115 grain Remington green and white box, and 115 grain S&B. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's load up the old war horse and take a look. <laughs> This pistol is absolutely amazing. I was hoping it would be this awesome, and it was. What's actually kind of funny is the fact that I shot this after I shot my new uh, slicked up custom Glock. I gotta say, I kind of enjoyed this a little bit more. It kind of colored my feelings on that Glock. This Walter P1 is everything you'd want from a German service pistol. This has that German Kraut special sauce, I gotta say. That single action trigger pull is just pure sexellence. That double action trigger pull is kind of difficult if you've never actually used it, as you can see from that bit of hesitation when I first shot it. Now, one thing I don't really know what, I don't know what caused it, but the first shot I fired, uh, the round didn't go off. I can only assume it was a bad round, but all I had to do was just Reset the hammer and it went off after that and then I had no other issues, no jams, no nothing. Uh, I have had some interesting issues with uh, some of the cheaper 9mm in uh, steel frame pistols. I'm not really sure what is with that as I had a dead round on a uh, in the Beretta 92 once as well. Very strange to say the least. Uh, overall, this is a very, very, very fun gun to shoot, and I cannot wait to get the review out on this. The Walter P1 
does live up to the hype and it is a firearm I highly recommend taking a look at if you can find one for a good price. And so, I am General Lots, wishing you good Walter P1 and good Beretta 92, whatever makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and if you can, please consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can continue bringing you this great content.